Getting a book deal and getting published is a true dream come true for any aspiring authors. And in this video, I want to share with you my experience and my journey on how I got my non-fiction book, Blood, Fire and Gold, published with Ebery from Penguin Random House. I have to be honest with you, it was definitely not easy. It was a true journey and I'm gonna share with you exactly what I did. But I also don't want this journey to discourage you. Actually, it's quite the opposite that I want for you. I want you to be empowered and encouraged and believe in your own dreams because at the end of the day, if you don't believe in yourself, no one will believe in you. And that is so true for me. And again, I'm not like the perfect example, but I do have some experience on how to get a book deal actually even too. And so that's why I want to give you my best and I hope useful tips to you. So there are five of them. So let's dive in. The first useful tips and the thing that was kind of very daunting for me was getting an agent. So I'm not from the UK. I come from France, as you realize with my beautiful French accent uh, and, uh, and my mispronunciation of most words. But anyway, um, but, but for me, so it was like really hard because I had no network. Uh, it took me years to master the language, but I, I did a PhD beforehand and I really worked on my writing skills during that PhD. But then I knew that I really, really wanted to share my research with a bigger audience. It's always been like a dream of mine to be able to show what I love with you guys. That's also why I'm doing this YouTube channel. That's why I'm doing a weekly, you know, video on women uh, history because women history is my passion, but it's also why I'm doing these videos of tips for students and for you guys as aspiring authors or working mothers or whatever. Like, you know, I have lots of topics to cover with you for this year. And so for me, it's really about sharing because I really believe that once you share um, your struggles, your journey, your expectations, your experience with other people, then you help them and it makes things easier. And getting an agent was absolutely overwhelming for me. I had no network. I knew some people who were willing to look at my book proposal or help me, but I had no true introduction or connection to any agents. So now for, for you, it's like, what I want you to remember is that you're gonna have to do some research, you're gonna have, and I can list, you know, in down below in the description box, some, you know, agencies that are very, very good that I know my friends are working with. I'm obviously gonna list my own agency, uh, but like, it was, it was really daunting. So what I knew is that I needed to have kind of an idea of a book. Um, it didn't need to be a full proposal. Uh, it, it was um, m more or less like a first three pages to get my head around what I wanted to do. And I've always known that I wanted to do something like Elizabeth I and Catherine de Medici because it stemmed from my PhD. So I knew I had the sources, I knew I had the story, you know, but I just, it was just really hard to come from an academic background and turn it into something public that the public would be interested in. And for me, what was really also hard was that I was going to send, you know, ideas to many different agencies and I got rejected. And the rejection is very painful. Obviously, we're not gonna lie about it. You know, I think in social media, you only see people who succeed. But you can't succeed without failing. Because once you put yourself out there, not everyone is going to like you or your work. And that is okay. Because you want to be with someone, an agent, I'm talking here, uh, that is going to like your work, that is going to like you. So I think it's okay to have a list of agency that you really want to work with. Do your research. Which agency would you like to work with? Why? have they you know do they have similar titles that's another thing as well you need to look at you know do they have similar titles do they have similar authors and you can check all of this online and look at it and be like hmm well if they have like for example for me if they have like three Tudor historian do they really want a fourth or do they really need a fourth are they going to be able to fight for me like, you know, at the same level, if someone had no Tudor story, not just one, and then, you know, they would really put all their efforts into fighting for my corner. So here you need to know what is your specialty, what's your agent specialty, and can they be the best fit? And this is what matters the most, get the best fit for you. 
My second useful tip, I hope, is that you need to start working on your book proposal because obviously you have that first three pages of ideas, but what does a book proposal look like? This is why I'm sharing with you mine right now to see what it looks like. As you can see, it's very, very detailed. You have, um, you know, uh, uh, kind of a synopsy. You have a chapter outline that it takes a lot of space and it's, it doesn't have to be super long, but it should be like at least two paragraphs per chapter, just to have an idea to show your, um, your agent and then the publisher that you have lots of ideas and you've thought about the structure. Then you also have the scholarship and then you have a sample chapter. And all of this was so daunting for me at first, but to be fair, I spent so much time, you know, on it and with my agent, you know, once I got my agent, we really worked on it. And the truth is I spent like almost 18 months on my book proposal for Elizabeth and Catherine de Medici. And you might think, oh my God, but that's also because I was working full time and publishing other academic books at the same time. So I published at the same time, like three other books. So obviously I was not going to have like the same amount of time. And I was teaching uh, a huge load um, of, of teaching, like a huge, a huge amount of hours. So I was really like, you know, kind of slowed down and it might not be the case for you and you might nail it in three months. And I think it also helps once you know what people are looking like what they're looking at, what they want. So that's why I'm putting this example of a book proposal for you. And I really hope it helps because at the end of the day, I really want you to get a book deal and to get published if it's your dream. My third useful tip is to get inspired. So if you, you know, if you, if you really want to write for a public audience, but you never read nonfiction books in your, you know, not just in your field, then you don't really realize what it entails, what type of writing style it entails. And then it, it is not gonna help you. It's gonna be like, re like you really need to know how these books were, are written. You need to understand the structure and you need to analyze it. And for me, it also gets lots of inspiration. So here I'm putting some books that have inspired me over the years to get my head around what is public history? How do you do it well? And so once you have these ideas like, all right, this is how it's done. And also realize that are, there are different styles of narrative history, um, your know, public history. There's not just, you know, one type and that's it. So choose your style and be true to yourself because you are, you know, you are about to be your own author. You are about to be Publish so really get inspired but also know what you want now let's talk about a topic that i think you will be all interested in us my fourth tip is you know what is a book deal and how much money can you expect so a book deal is when your agent basically gets a publisher interested in your work and they offer you an advance money. So it's not about royalties. You'll discuss royalties later in the contract, but they offer you advance money to write the book. And that's where it becomes very important. My advice is do not start writing a book before having a book deal. And that reason is not just for the money aspect of it, though I think you should not work for free, but it's also because that once you have an editor, they have ideas, right? For example, if you looked at my book proposal, you'll see that the prologue was very different from what's hap actually happening in my book. Because my editor, though she loved the book, you know, she loved the book proposal, she had some suggestions. So if I had started and say, yeah, that's my prologue and I'm gonna keep writing on this, I would not have listened to what she wanted. So always wait for a book deal before starting writing. That's my, you know, very, very important advice here. Secondly, you know, there's always this question about, okay, what's an advance? What's a good advance? Well, it's a very hard <laughs> question to answer, but I'm gonna do my best and I'm gonna give you numbers because as a French person, I'm not worried about talking about money. So my advice is like, uh, 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 you should not get anything under 10,000 pounds. That's like kind of the lowest of what you can get. It's still very good when you think about it. Obviously you need to realize that your agent is gonna get a cut and that it's gonna be split into four installments or three. So like, obviously it's not like life-changing money, but it's kind of a nice, you know, little 
discussion like yeah especially you know with the cost of living crisis it can't hurt to have two thousand pounds more like a year like it, it really can't hurt but that's obviously like the lowest now um there are people who make six figures it's in non-fiction i'm talking here these people have usually like a big following you know on social media they've been doing that for years they have a reputation they're quite well known and that is why you know um, a publisher would be like yes i'm banking on you you're gonna do great and i'm giving you six figures so here i don't think that's really realistic to think about six figures right away you need to build yourself up little by little to get there now the range really so i said ten thousand is like the lowest six figures is the biggest really the highest but here we i would say like between 20 and 50 60 would be like where you could land a good um book deal you should be happy if you between that range obviously the higher the better because it means you have more money uh, but like it is and, and then it's just a question of negotiation so how do you get higher well basically is that if you have more than one publisher interested in your work then there's an auction and then they fight for it that's quite interesting for you um or because you built a reputation for yourself before and though you're not that big you know that big name that's always on tv or that big name that you know has already sold many books before you kind of build a reputation for yourself so they're kind of paying also for the expertise and the work you put before right so like there's kind of a respect here that is happening so a good book deal between 20 and 60 and then obviously they are like the two other ex extremes so i hope that it helped for you to give you an idea of what you should expect if you wanted to get a book deal the last tip for you is remember you're not just selling a book you're selling yourself so if you're an aspiring author you want to do well you want you don't just want to write one book so you want to find the right agent that understand that but you also want to write to find the right publisher that understand that that's going to build your career that is going to believe in you that is going to you know to to basically get in that journey with you like by your side so to do that you need to remember that you're selling yourself that it's about you it's about the author it's not just about one book obviously one book is very important you need to put all your efforts and energy into it but put energy into yourself and make sure that you put yourself first that it's about the author and not just a book and that means that you will build a long-term relationship with your agent and with your publisher I really hope that this video was helpful to you. If you have any questions or if I can help you in any way, please leave a comment down below and I will reply to you. Thank you so much for watching as usual and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.